YouTube family. Today we're going to show you how to create a video background in your Swift mobile applications. Now these moving video backgrounds are used extensively in modern web and mobile applications and they really do a nice job of bringing a nice clean front end design to your platform. So we're going to walk you through how to do it. It shouldn't take us too long. And here's the video we're going to be using. It's called Funfair. Um, this is the actual video I used in my application. Basically just a bunch of people having a day at a fair. This is a .mov file, which is important. This method will only work for .mov files. I have not found a way to get it to work for .mp4 yet, so if you guys do find a way for it to uh, work with mp4, please let me know. Otherwise, just do the conversion through QuickTime or whatever software you use. So I might have that. Here's the Xcode main page. We're going to create a single view application today. I'm going to click next. I'm going to call mine video background. Save to my desktop. Cool. So we're here. And so basically, let's think about the step by step what we need. Um, to create a video background, basically what we're going to do is we're going to drag a UI view onto our storyboard. From there, we're just going to configure that video view into playing our video. So first things first, let's actually drag our video, which is called Funfair here, or whatever, you, whatever your video is called. I'm going to drag it right in between these two. Okay. So, actually, sorry. Press cancel. We're going to drag it inside our project directory. So, in there, finish. Good. In our storyboard, we're going to do one thing. We're just going to drag in a UI view and then position it however we want. So in this in this example, I just want to make a full screen video. So I'm just drag it all the way to the edges, and then we can always add constraints later. Cool. In our view controller, we're going to make a quick outlet. I'm going to call mine video view, and that's going to be a UI view. And just so we get it over with, let's connect it to our storyboard right now. So we're going to right click there at on self and then just control drag from our video view to the view we dragged onto the storyboard. There we go. Awesome. All right. And then we just need to do two import lines. So we need to import AV foundation and AV kit. And I'm pretty sure these are just Apple default. Um, and they allow us to play video through Swift. So cool. So now that we have the video view, we're actually going to configure configure our view. So let's let's create a private function actually. So let's say oops, private func setup view. And basically, we're going to call this function when we start everything up. So let's call setup view in view did load. And then set of view, what do we want to do? First, we want to specify a path. And this path will tell um, the computer where to find our video file that it's supposed to be playing. So we're going to say let path. And it's going to be um, in, in terms of a URL. So we're going to say URL parentheses file with path. So I file URL with path. Fundle dot main dot path for resource for resource funfair or whatever you called your video. And then we need to specify the type. And in this case, it's going to be of type move. Cool. And then we might have to cast this. Yes. Cool. So now that we specify the path, 
now we can actually create the player and this player is going to be the actual object that grabs this file and plays it so we're going to say let player equal av player which is the object and then we're going to specify its url which is going to be the path we just defined up top now that we have that we're going to create a layer so we're going to say let new layer equal av player layer and we're going to pass in the player and then we need to specify its frame and its frame is basically going to be our video view dot frame so basically we, we want it to be just as big as what it is on the storyboard so video view dot frame cool and then make sure we add the sub layer so self dot video view dot layer dot add sub layer cool. new layer and then we're going to change video gravity so we're going to say new layer dot video gravity is equal to av layer video gravity dot resize aspect fill and basically this will allow it so it doesn't get distorted in any way and it still fills up the whole screen. Oops, sorry. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, all we have to do is say player.play. Um, and yeah, and that should work. We can try that out. Let's just add some sound real quick. Let's run this. You see that nice little video playing. Awesome, guys. So there you have it. Um, actually, one last thing I want to add. So you'll see, I don't know how long this video is, but you'll see that if it comes to the very end, it just stops. And that's obviously something we don't want because we don't want the video just to stop because it looks terrible. We want it to repeat. Um, so basically to do that, we got to add a little bit more. So see, see how it just stops right there? That's what we don't want. So let's make it so it starts from the beginning as soon as it comes to, it comes to the end. So first of all, um, we're going to create, um, we're going to use Notification Center. So we're going to say, first we're going to say player.action at item n is equal to av layer. Um, AV player, sorry, AV player action at item end dot none, and then we're going to say notification center dot default dot add observer self selector is going to be NS dot notification is notification dot name that's raw we pass in selector selector we're gonna call mine um, view controller dot video did play to end so this will be called every time comes to the end of the video name ns notification value um, av player item did play to end time notification and then finally, oh, whoops. Name. Do I have? Object is going to be player. Dot current item. Right. 
So that should be good. That will throw an error because we still we still need to define this method. Yep. So let's define this method right now. Um, because we use a selector, we do need to add this at objc in front of the function. So I call my video play, video did play to end notification notification. Cool. And basically, if this method gets called, all we want to do is restart the video. So we're going to say let player av player item is equal to notification dot object as av player item and then we're going to seek or basically move it to the beginning so we're going to say player.seek2 and it's called kcm time zero Hashtag selector, selector, name as notification dot name, raw value. Okay, have extra. Dot add. Okay, sorry guys, I'll put this again. Notification center. Because this is giving me an error, I don't want to deal with it. Let's just let's just try this again, right? The notification center dot default dot add observer, and that's the one we want. Cool. Self. The selector is going to be our video did play to end. Its name is going to be this NS notification dot name slash raw value AV player item did play to end. Notification object is going to be player dot current item. That should work. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not I'm not really sure what I did the first time guys, I'm gonna be honest, but sometimes you just need to start from start from the beginning. Alright, so let's let's just watch the end of this to make sure that it repeats. So there it should add and just repeat it. So there you there you go, guys. There, that's how you implement video backgrounds into Swift applications. I really hope you find a way to implement this in your own applications. And if you do, please send me some examples. I'd love to see what you guys are working on. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.